Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house as we gather together for worship on this second Sunday in Lent. Uh, the Latin title for, for this Sunday is, is Reminiscere, which means remember, coming from the beginning of our intro, you know, remember, O Lord. Um, today, Jesus insults a woman, rejects her, and tells her she does not deserve either his kindness or his attention. He's right, and she knows it. And that's why she will not let him go. She knows that God, as God's Messiah, he comes in mercy. She clings not to her own worth, but only to the eternal promise of God. We're in the same condition she is. May we share in that same faith. This Wednesday, we continue our Lenten midweek series on the witnesses of the Passion. This week, we'll be looking at Pontius Pilate. Uh, our Vespers service uh, starts at 7.30 p.m. As today is the fourth Sunday of the month, we have a special door offering. As you leave for our sister congregation, Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Marion, you can also contribute any time for them by writing a note on your offering envelope for Gethsemane. Also, a reminder that uh, uh, there will be a voters meeting next Sunday um, after service, March 7th. Uh, a reminder, please leave your hymnals down on the pew after service so we can wipe them down before we stock them. Are there any other announcements that didn't make it into the announcement sheet or need to be specially brought to our attention? Bob? Just a last minute reminder, I will be taking the baby bottles from the Women Resource Center with me when I leave church today. And, uh, so if you have yours at home that you want to bring in later, that's fine. I'll certainly be taking them in later on anyway. We have a meeting at Right to Life on Monday at the Women's Resource Center uh, down on Main, North Main Street. So you're always welcome to attend if you like at 7 o'clock. And uh, so we appreciate any, any help we can get. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, anything else? Then our order for worship this morning is Divine Service Setting 3, found on page, starting on page 184. But first we begin with singing together our opening hymn number 579, The Law of God is Good and Wise, number 579. Please rise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And that you have forgiven the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you, and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us, and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. Our intro for this day is found printed in your bulletins. is from Psalm 25. We proclaim our intro responsibly. <clears throat> Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness. For they are from of old. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all their troubles. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to your mercy, remember me, for your goodness' sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. For your name's sake, O Lord, I pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Please be seated now as we 
we hear from God. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Lent is from the 32nd chapter of Genesis. And Jacob arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over Penuel, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore to this day the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that shrank, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle that shrank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual is from Psalm 25. The troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Look upon my affliction and my pain. And forgive all my sins. Our epistle reading is from the fourth chapter of Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through, Lord, through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarn you and testify. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue now in 
with sharing our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed as found on page 192. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We continue now in your bulletins with a brief review from Luther's small catechism from the section on the Ten Commandments. The Eighth Commandment. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. The ninth commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not scheme to get our neighbor's inheritance or house, or give it in a way in which only appears right, but help and be of service to him in keeping. The Tenth Commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God, so that we do not entice or force away our neighbor's wife, workers, or animals, or turn them against him but urge them to stay and do their duty. The close of the commandments, what does God say about all these commandments? He says, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the Father to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. What does this mean? God threatens to punish all who break these commandments. Therefore, we should fear his wrath and not do anything against them. But he promises grace and every blessing to all who keep these commandments. Therefore, we should also love and trust in him and gladly do what he commands. We continue now with singing together hymn number 615, When in the Hour of Deepest Need, number 615.
The title of the bulletin is incorrect. Or the title for this message is God or the Devil? Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this second Sunday in Lent is our gospel reading in Matthew chapter 15. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. You have heard it said the seeing is believing. But I tell you that on this side of heaven, your eyes, your ears, and all of your senses will let you down. They are all tainted with sin and cannot be trusted. Therefore, in your daily life, it's extremely difficult to tell the difference between God and the devil. Just ask Abraham. Is it God or some demonic voice that tells him to sacrifice his son, his only son, Isaac? How does Abraham know whether God or the devil is speaking to him? Or ask Job, is it God or the devil who destroyed his family, his livelihood, his health, his life? And really, which one is, is playing the seemingly cruel game? The devil who asks God's permission to torment Job? Or God who grants the devil's request? Your senses cannot be trusted. Your perception of how your life or the world should be cannot be trusted. So what can be? God's word in Holy Scripture alone is your guiding light. And the thing by which all other things, even your senses, your thoughts, and your expectations should be judged. Today is literally remembrance, remember Sunday. But what, or better yet, who is remembering? For this answer, we can look at the first occurrence of the word remember in the Bible. In Genesis chapter 9, God says to Noah, starting in verse 15, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in, in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. That's a good promise to hear from God today. But even in this covenant to Noah, it's based on a much older promise. Long before the flood, God promised Adam and Eve that he would provide a Savior, a Messiah. That is what he remembers. All of our great fathers and mothers of the faith prayed for God to remember what he had promised, despite what they were experiencing, and in spite of how they thought God or the devil was testing to to them. The word remember is the great word of prayer. Job uses it in his misery, talking to God in faith. King David uses it in his prayer book, the Psalms, not surprisingly over 30 times. Today we have David's word in our intro, giving the Latin name for today. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have ever they have been ever of old. And when the word itself is not used, the great men and women of the Bible demonstrate how to hold God's feet to the fire. 
And this is exactly what he wants you to do. Jacob wrestles with God and will not let it go until God blesses him. The Canaanite woman in our gospel text will not be dissuaded by Jesus despite his seeming cruelty toward her. She is an example of faithful prayer because she will not give up. She knows who Jesus is and what he has come to do. So she wrestles with him until he blesses her by granting her prayer. Her daughter is demon-possessed, and yet it looks and sounds and feels like Jesus is the one playing the devil. First, he ignores her prayer and great confession, like she's not even there. Then, in her hearing, he tells his disciples she is not worth his time. And finally, when he does speak to her, he calls her a little, yapping, no-good dog. Yet, despite all appearances, she persists in her prayer. She does not give up. She won't let him go. Not just because she's desperate, but because she insists that only Jesus can help her. She trusts that no matter what Jesus says, no matter what he throws at her, he will ultimately help her. In fact, she believes that even his insults, even his torments, even the grief that he causes her is somehow, in some divinely mysterious way, part of the Lord's help that she so earnestly desires. That is why Jesus praises her in the end for having such great faith. She overlooks what she sees, what she hears, what she feels at the moment, and holds Jesus' feet to the fire. She knows he's the Messiah, God in human flesh, David's son and David's Lord. She believes that he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but that somehow he can bring her into that fold. This woman is also fully aware of who she is. That very, that every answer, every seeming insult, every apparently hurtful word that Jesus says is true and deserved. Yes, Lord, she says, I deserve to be ignored by you. Yes, Lord, I am not worthy of your time because of my many sins. Yes, Lord, I am a dog, because like a dog, I keep returning to the vomit of my own sinful ways. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. So I believe that even though you are right to treat me harshly, and even though everything you say is true, and even though I deserve much worse, than your scolding and insults. Nevertheless, I also believe that in the end, you will not turn away my prayer, nor your mercy from me. For you do not desire the death of a sinner, but that I should turn from my sins and repent. And in a way known only by faith, the woman knew that he would not just treat her like a dog, but like a member of the family, sitting at the table with all the others. Really, she's no different than Abraham or Job. She knows the Lord can turn her suffering to good. 
that he constantly uses the devil's tricks to work out for her, for her salvation. That the Lord lets the devil only go so far. And that the Lord never turns a deaf ear to those who pray to him in faith. So now comes the really hard question. How much must you suffer? Just enough. Not too much. And not too little. And in a way that you do not understand now, that suffering is actually for your good. As St. Paul says in Romans chapter 8, For in this hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Sometimes it is going to be very difficult for you to tell the difference between God and the devil when you are in a really hard part of your life, bombarded by temptations, suffering under your sins and the sins of people around you. But never does the Lord turn you away or give up on you. He pushes you to the point where no one else can help you but Him. He gives you painful crosses so that you have eyes for His cross alone. He is the Messiah. Come to take your place so that you can have His. And because he has gone the way of his cross and death, <coughs> suffering, he always leads you safely through your cross and suffering to his glory by raising you up at the divine service, by washing you in holy baptism, by feeding you in Holy Communion, by His preaching and in His own resurrection on the last day. Jesus loves you and wants the best for you. Come as little dogs begging for a scrap from your Lord's table and He will give His mercy and forgiveness in greater measure than you either prayed for or expected. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, keep your hearts and minds forever in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue now on the bottom of page 192 with singing together our offertory, Created Me. Please rise.
As you strove for Jacob, so strive now for your faithful people who put their trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, you disdain nothing that you have made. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we would receive your absolution with true penitence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, preserve all pastors in Christ, especially Matthew, our synod president, Kevin, our district president, and Richard, our circuit visitor. Renew in this congregation and among all your saints faith to cling to you in adversity, boldness to oppose the devil and resist the flesh, and compassion to serve one another in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, preserve all those learning the faith, all teachers, children, and their parents, and every Christian home from the assaults of the evil one. As you have called us in holiness, so sanctify us to walk as we ought, and to please you through the Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, give steadfastness and wisdom to our leaders, especially Joseph, our president, Michael, our governor, Christina, our mayor, and all congressmen, judges, and civil servants. Especially do we pray for our local law enforcement and Brett, Robin, Bradley, Garrett, and Spencer in our sheriff's office. Grant peace between nations and a spirit of humility and concord to our citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, as we have no strength to save ourselves from sickness and death, defend us and those we love from every adversity of body and soul. Especially do we pray for Jim, Patricia, Mary, Ray, and Evelyn in their ongoing needs. Mark, Barbara, Tony, Mara, and their afflictions. Heather healing from a herniated disc. Angela's brother in Russia dying of Parkinson's, Lisa and all those struggling with the pandemic, and all those we remember now in our hearts. Remember not our former iniquities, but let your tender mercies come speedily. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd of Israel, we offer thanksgiving for the blessings you give to us, rejoicing in all your gifts of life, especially all those celebrating birthdays, as well as Brian and Jan, and all those celebrating anniversaries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we implore you by your Holy Spirit to strengthen our hearts and confirm our faith and hope in your grace and mercy, so that although we have reason to fear because of our conscience, our sin, and our unworthiness, we may nevertheless, with the woman of Canaan, hold fast to your grace, and in every trial and temptation, find you a present help and refuge, through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, 
Read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may ever embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you Seven, seven, nine. 